Good evening friends, I am going to talk to you about chronic kidney disease. As you all know, the incidence and prevalence of chronic kidney disease has been increasing all over the world and even more in our country because of increasing incidence of diabetes and high blood pressure. Now what is chronic kidney disease? The term chronic kidney disease is used when there is a marker of kidney disease which exists for more than three months. And what are the common markers of kidney disease? When you have any urinary abnormality in the form of proteinuria or microscopic hematuria indicating glomerulodesis or if you have a reduced kidney function in terms of glomerular filtration rate. If your glomerular filtration rate is less than 60 ml per minute corrected to surface area of 1.73 square meters for more than three months then by today's definition one is considered to have chronic kidney disease. <clears throat> now how do you find out whether one has a chronic kidney disease? So everyone must have a urine examination. Normally the urine should not contain any protein or blood and if one has that urinary abnormality even if it is not symptomatic it is not normal and having persistent urinary abnormality for more than three months is enough to classify this person as having chronic kidney disease. How do you find out the glomerular filtration rate? Now normally in practice we use the level of creatinine as a marker of kidney function and you know that the normal value of creatinine is between 0.8 and 1.1 milligrams per deciliter being slightly lower in females as compared to males. But you must remember that kidney creatinine is not an adequate marker of kidney function because it depends not only on kidney function but it also depends on generation of creatinine. So if someone is very muscular and has been eating uh, non-vegetarian food, his generation of creatinine will be high. For him, a higher value of creatinine like 1.2 may be normal. But that same value of creatinine for someone who is thin and who is emaciated and who is a vegetarian is actually high creatinine. Therefore, one must try and estimate glomerular filtration rate from the creatinine value. There are different formulas available. The most easy and widely used formula in our country is called the Cockroft and Gold formula. In this formula, 140 minus the age multiplied by the weight in kilogram divided by 72 times the creatinine value, you get the estimated creatinine clearance. This value has to be multiplied by 0.85 in case of females. In the Western countries, the formulas used are MDRD formula and the CKD EPA formulas. However, these formulas have not been developed on the basis of Indian population and therefore we are not sure how relevant they are in Indian population. True that Cockroft and Gall formula is also not developed in the Indian population but for all practical purposes it's a simple formula to be applied. One does not need a calculator or a computer and one should use it to estimate the glomerular filtration rate. Now once you have identified that someone has an underlying chronic kidney disease, the next important thing is to find out what is the cause of chronic kidney disease. If you can identify the cause of chronic kidney disease and if it can be treated, one can prevent further worsening of kidney function. And if it cannot be treated, one can take several measures to try and slow down the rate of progression of kidney disease. The commonest cause of chronic kidney disease all over the world in, and in our country is diabetes and high blood pressure. 
and this diabetes and high blood pressure in combination account for 50 to 60 percent of all cases of chronic kidney disease. A good control of these two conditions can slow down the rate at which the kidney function goes down. Other causes of chronic kidney disease are glomerulonephritis, which if picked up at an early, st early stage and managed, can slow down the progression of kidney disease. Kidney stones, if you treat them, you can prevent further progression of kidney disease. Then you have hereditary kidney disease, for which you may not be able to do anything specifically, but you can treat other factors associated with chronic kidney disease. Analgesic abuse is an important and a preventable cause and one must try and avoid taking nephrotoxic analgesic drugs. So there are many possibilities of preventing chronic kidney disease and retarding its progression. A lot is being discussed about the role of protein restriction in retarding the progression of kidney disease. While this is true in the early stages, its implementation at late stage of chronic kidney disease may actually be harmful because as chronic kidney disease progresses to advanced stage of chronic kidney disease, there is a spontaneous reduction in the protein intake because the appetite decreases. And as the appetite decreases, the nutritional status of a person worsens and nutritional status is an even more important prognostic marker of outcome than the kidney disease. So it is very important to individualize the dietary protein restriction in patients with kidney disease. And in my opinion, at an advanced stage, if a patient is already symptomatic, has already lost weight, has poor appetite, it would not be a good idea to restrict the dietary protein. We all know that chronic kidney disease is a progressive condition. And therefore, as the kidney disease reaches an advanced stage, one should start planning. And once one reaches what is called as stage 5 of chronic kidney disease, that means the glomerular filtration rate is less than 15 ml per minute, one should plan either for dialysis or for kidney transplant. Obviously, kidney transplant is a far better option if one has no other comorbidities and one can try for a kidney transplant if there is a closely related family member. If kidney transplant is not possible or one may not be sure whether he will be able to go for kidney transplant soon, one should start planning for dialysis and therefore one must make an arteriovenous fistula which is a vascular access required for dialysis. When one does not do this planning, a stage comes when suddenly one has to get admitted to intensive care unit, then a catheter has to be placed into one of the large veins to initiate the dialysis. This emergency, this placement of catheter can be avoided by proper planning in advance and making a vascular access in the form of arteriovenous fistula. There is another form of dialysis that one should be aware of and that is called as peritoneal dialysis where a catheter is put inside the peritoneal cavity inside your abdomen. The catheter is introduced by a surgical procedure and of course peritoneal dialysis how it is performed has to be a separate subject and will be dealt with in one of my other talks. But as I have always mentioned, chronic kidney disease once it advances to end stage, has limited treatment options, one must try and prevent end stage kidney disease. And to do so, if one has risk factors, either in the form of diabetes or high blood pressure or abuse of analgesics or kidney stones, one must work on these factors at an early stage to prevent chronic kidney disease or to retard the progression.